students have also been really hit hard by this pandemic and, and really frankly we are exhausted throughout the pandemic we've been infantilized we've been scapegoated we've been exploited for fees and rent we've been pushed from pillar to post because this government refuses at every single turn to deliver for students and you know, students and workers at colleges have faced masses of upheaval and, you know, working class students, disabled students, black and brown students have disproportionately experienced digital poverty. But we've seen that access to education has become a postcode lottery. Um, and that's a core concern for us as a union. Uh, we've also seen, you know, on, on average, university students have paid over a grand in rent for empty accommodation, and that number is rising every single week, and that's on top of a system that already extorts students to, to individually bankroll what should be a publicly funded service. Uh, and so you've got most home students paying £9,250 a year and countless international students paying tens of thousands of pounds each year too. Uh, and over the past few months, we've seen students fenced or locked into their homes. Some have patrolled dogs outside. We've seen students abused by security forces and police on their campuses, particularly students of colour, all sorts. Uh, and so, yeah, we're exhausted to say the least, but we're not just exhausted for ourselves. We're also exhausted for workers on our campuses because we're organising in solidarity with academics who've been facing precarity and poor conditions, with outsourced maintenance workers who university management treat as disposable when they're anything but. And our anger towards this government also extends to our roles as members of the communities that we're part of, whether that's the place we've lived our whole lives or somewhere that we've chosen to call our second home in our time as students.